So in the previous lecture, we have looked at uh, when we were developing uh, the representation using wave functions as the basis for C3V point group. So we saw that for C3V point group, when we took wave functions as basis, that is Px and Py, what we got is a two cross two matrix, right? So here, for all three of them and that was a irreducible representation right so that means although we started with px as the basis we ended up getting a representation which is a linear combination of px and py right so we started with px but we ended up with some coefficients with px plus py right so this was what we were getting. For example, when we were doing C3 rotation, we got minus half Px plus or minus root 3 by 2 into Py. So that means eigenfunction can also have uh, degenerate eigenvalues. So what does it mean? So let us say that uh, if we have degenerate eigenfunctions, so let us look at this example in more details. degenerate eigenfunctions okay so suppose e is our energy of a particle or a system is k fold degenerate what does it mean when i say k fold degenerate i will tell so that means that if my psi i can be expressed as a linear combination of psi1, psi2, of course with coefficients c1, c2, c3, psi3 plus ck, psi k and if h psi1 is equal to e psi1, h psi2 is equal to e psi2 and so on so then i can say that h psi i is equal to e psi i right so all of them will give you same energy and then there if let's say there are multiple eigenfunctions which give me same energy then if i take a linear combination of those eigenfunctions that would also give me the same eigenvalue right so this would be so in this particular equation i would say that my e is k fold degenerate like in this case we found that our representation is two fold degenerate where px and py were giving me same eigenvalues right so similarly now we are considering a case of k fold degenerate right okay so let us further look at this let's say if we have r psi i i can express this as a linear combination so this can be written as r j i and psi j where j goes from 1 to k right because my e is k fold degenerate so i can express my psi a into k linear combinations of different eigenfunctions and r is any particular symmetry operation right so this is a symmetry operation okay so now similarly for any other symmetry operation i can again write so for some other symmetry operation let's call it as s i can write s psi now let's call it as some other index psi l this can be written as summation m goes from 1 to k 
So I'm just using different index just to keep it different from the previous one. Psi m, right? So now R is a symmetry operation which is acting on a linear combination of uh, eigenfunctions which are degenerate and then uh, S is some other symmetry operation which is acting on same linear combination going from 1 to k and these are the corresponding coefficients of linear combinations, right? Not the coefficients here. So these are the corresponding characters actually upon doing when R is operated whatever character you get corresponding to each eigenfunction this is the corresponding character right okay so now we can say that since r and s are members of a group there must exist as per group definition there must exist a product of r and s equal to t which should also follow the similar behavior, right? So that means effect of T on Psi should also be similar. So let us try to write down T, let's call it as Psi N is equal to summation T and let's give it as a index O O goes from 1 to k and this would be psi o okay so now if we have this so because r and s are members of a group there must exist r s equal to t so if we say that the effect of t on the linear combination of eigenfunctions should be this then if we calculate the effect of r and s onto a given linear combination the coefficients should match or the characters should match so let us say if we combine the effect of R and S, what do we get? Combining the effect of R S on Psi I, we get Psi I is equal to so let us first operate s and then we will operate r so if we operate s we will get summation j equal to 1 to k and we will get small s j i and we will get psi j right so same way so what we have done is we have just operated s onto psi a now next we will operate r onto psi j so that will give us or i'll just write it here that i can take the summation out j equal to 1 to k and sji and i will now bring r into the picture psi j right so that r can operate onto this and what do i have now so then I, now i can write summation j equal to 1 to k and I have s j i and now I can write this as another summation let's call it as m equal to 1 to k and this will be r m j and psi m okay now if I take those summation out I have got j equal to 1 to k summation so there is nothing fancy about it this is just whatever we have shown in c3v point group we are just doing it for a general k fold degenerate case now this will be s j i and this will be r m j and this will be psi m right now since we can say that r s is equal to t so we have chosen this that if r s are members of a group r s must be equal to t 
there must have a t as a member of the group which should be equal to product of the two group elements so that would define that this particular part over here should be equal to this part over here right so let us equate these two what do we get so we get and we see that one of the summations is not required because we'll see so we'll say summation over j equal to 1 to k so i will write r m j and s j i and this should be equal to only this part t and the index we can of course we can take this as m i so do not get confused about the index so in this case i'm just choosing that one it's showing that all the linear combination should go from 1 to k for different values so indices uh, don't have really any meaning over here in terms that uh, what they are representing that they are representing it's a k fold degenerate case okay so now if we look at this particular case what do we have what can we say about this so tmi what do we think what is tmi so tmi is nothing but it's a form of a matrix or this expression is for the elements of a matrix T which is the product of R and S right so if I want to write a general matrix element T which is the product of the matrix R and matrix S, then I would get this expression, right? Thus, we can say that thus the matrices R, S, and T together they form a matrix representation. of the group when the bases are a set of k fold t generate eigen functions of h hamiltonian with a particular eigen value So thus that will be a k dimensional representation. This will be a k dimensional representation. And it would also be a irreducible representation. We have seen again that in the case of uh, C3B point group that uh, when we started with Px, we got a two-fold degenerate representation which was an irreducible representation and we can always test it with uh, GOT right so that should be clear now so what we have shown so we started with an example of two-fold degenerate case and we have shown that the same thing can happen for k-fold degenerate representation so whenever your eigenfunctions give a k-fold degenerate uh, eigenvalue the ir representation that you will get using those wave functions or eigenfunctions as the basis set that will be k dimensional representation and it will be a irreducible representation so this covers the wave functions as the basis set subtopic of uh, group theory and quantum mechanics next topic in this quantum mechanics is the direct product we will see what the direct product is well we would have all seen what is the direct product of matrices it is very similar here exactly same actually so we'll see what is the direct product and we'll see what is the application of this in group theory okay so let's start with understanding what the direct product is so suppose that r is a symmetry operation
of a molecule and there are two sets of eigenfunctions that form basis of the group. So let us write down one set as x1, x2, going all the way to x, let's say, m. And the second set is, let's say, y1, y2, and this one is going all the way to n. Okay. So now, if we want to write in the shorthand notations, we can write it as R x i can be written as summation. The character obtained can be written as small x j i and x j where j goes from 1 to m, right? So this was up to m. And similarly here we can write R operating on y let's call it as k this can be now written as summation small y l k where l goes from 1 to n and i have y l right so now how do we write the direct product of this the direct product of the two basis sets is given by so direct product we can write it as uh, let us say direct product as so what you have to do is basically multiply each element of the basis set with the other each element so that is x1 y1 comma x1 y2 x1 y3 going all the way to x1 y n similarly we have x2 y1 x2 y2 going all the way to x2 y n again similarly we have x m y m so each element of the basis set is multiplied with each element of the other basis set that gives you the direct product of the two basis sets right so now what we will show here is functions maybe call them as uh, perhaps eigen functions in the direct product also form a basis for the representation so what do i mean so what i'm saying is that if the set of representation that is or set of eigenfunctions x1 x2 x3 form a basis and y1 y2 y3 etc form a basis then their direct product will also form the basis of the representation what is the use of that we will see but let us first see that this is the case. So let's try to do this mathematically. So x i, a general product here can be written as y k. And now if we apply r onto this, what do we get? We'll get two summations and we will get two characters over here, right? R will be applied on X as well as on to Y. So we can say that this is J I and X J. So that means there will be summation of J equal to 1 to M. And then we will have Y L K Y L. So this summation will be going from L 1 to N, right? Now I can combine these two numbers and write summation j goes from 1 to m 
summation L goes from 1 to N X J I Y L K X J and Y L now we can substitute this these two are numbers so we can make a product and substitute this so substitute x j i y l k with z and we'll combine the two indices j l and i k i can always do that because these are numbers right okay so this means that i can write r x i y k as double summation z j l i k x j y l right this is summation over j this is summation over l okay but what do we have now this is a general expression this is a standard expression relating symmetry operation and eigen function right so we are applying so as if we are taking this as a eigen function we are getting one value as a character right so when we apply symmetry operation onto a product of eigen functions we are getting the same product back along with the, with some character so this is a standard expression so now that means if x forms the basis separately and x i a linear combination of x forms the basis separately and linear combination of y forms the basis separately what we have shown here is that product of x y will also be of the same form and thus this will also form basis for the symmetry operations or for the particular representation given any symmetry operation okay so one more point over here to discuss now we can say from this we will see that we can deduce that the character of the representation of a direct product so now from direct product we get a separate representation right and that representation has some character so we are talking about the character of that representation so character of the representation of a direct product are equal to the products of the characters of the representation based on individual set of functions so that means what i intend to say here is that let's say we have a general group e a b and so on and x i that is x1 x2 x3 all of them are forming a basis set in general right and then their characters are let's say x1 x2 x3 and so on similarly y i is also forming a basis that will give you a ir representation as tau yi so this will give you y1 y2 y3 and so on so if x and y are forming the basis separately the direct product of that let's call it as j j x i y j will also form the basis and their characters will be given by x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 and so on right so this can be seen from here so let's say we want character of z 
let's say if x and y are individual sets of functions that form the basis then the direct product is called by z okay so we can call it as z so xz under any symmetry operation which is this one let's say any symmetry operation e a b c and so on is given by summation over small z that is j l j l and now this can be written as summation so i'm just using this equality i'm expanding this so this can be written as summation j summation l and i can say that this can be x j j and y l l right now and then i can separate this out as summation over j x j j summation over l y l l and now this can be written as character of x under that i r and character of y under that r right so the product of the two characters will give you the product of the character under the representation which is formed by the direct product of the set of functions right so i hope this is clear we will take examples of this and we will solve those examples in next class meanwhile you can practice through the maths and then look at the indices carefully that uh, if you got this thing correctly all right i think that's all we'll discuss examples in next class <laughs>